Good evening everyone and welcome to an Oz Cycling Chasers update tonight the 5th of November 2013. This is our second update for the 2013-14 season. Our overview update was available last week and it's on YouTube and also on our social media and our app if you'd like to watch that one just to see what the season's got in store. Tonight's one, a little bit more specific as to what's going to happen over the next couple of weeks weather-wise in the tropics. And most importantly and most interestingly, the last 24 hours have been very, very active over the Northern Territory, uh, the western parts of the Northern Territory. Darwin itself has broken a November daily rainfall record and there's been six actual records broken uh, in, sorry, six different stations records broken over a deluge that happened last night. So Wall and Mick are very impressed with what's going on uh, over the western part, western half of the Northern Territory so far in this build-up season. So if we have a look at the craziness that was last night over the Northern Territory, uh, particularly the western, northwestern top end, uh, we see just around about 11pm it all sort of started to get going and then around about 1, 1.30 it really hit the, uh, the central part of Darwin and then continued on through to about 4.30, 5am in the morning. So quite a remarkable little storm, uh, or large storm in fact, uh, for that particular region this time of year. That also comes off the back of a thunderstorm that hit Townsville and uh, and Townsville almost copped around about 100 millimetres this time last year. So definitely the, the boys, uh, us boys here in Townsville and the boys in Darwin are enjoying a great start to this cyclone season storm-wise anyway. Looking at the last 24 hours satellite-wise uh, using the weather zone, uh, so a lot of our graphics tonight are courtesy of weather zone. Uh, we can see there's a fairly good trough system pushing through Western Australia. It's created some very interesting and, and, and intense thunderstorms that are in the southwestern half of WA yesterday, which our uh, admin, Steve Brooks, managed to chase a few of those. So uh, get, in touch with, get in touch with Steve Brooks' weather page there, uh, Perth Weather Live, uh, and they'll, show you, they'll have some very good images of some of the storms that went through there yesterday. But we can see that trough system here over, over the central parts of, of WA now. We've got that thunderstorm storm over Darwin yesterday. Um, it's now obviously a fairly sky clear there. We've got a little bit of storm activity here in the uh, northwestern half of Western Australia. We've got another little trough system developing here over Queensland. Uh, some very intense thunderstorm activity there, very lightning active storm activity in the uh, southern central parts of Queensland. Uh, but other than that we can still see not quite a tropical pattern yet. Uh, over PNG it's very quiet. The Solomon Islands and the Coral Sea, it is very active but there's no, it's, it's more just convergence activity um, aided by some upper troughing. Uh, as Indonesia is also quite active but over the top of Australia in terms of uh, PNG, East Timor, very very inactive uh, thunderstorm wise. That trough system, as we start to head towards uh, the future, that trough system you can see here over W, uh, sorry, over South Australia tomorrow, we see fairly benign conditions over the tropics um, through Thursday, uh, and then Friday we see that trough system starting to push into the southern states and we start to see a little bit more activity out here in the northwest um, and very very uh, clear so far in in Queensland there is a little bit of storm activity expected in here that's not being picked up but nothing substantial and then as we head towards the last day uh, of the of the forecast modeling here uh, the Saturday we start to see conditions really ramping up here on the weekend over the southeastern parts of the continent. We still see some isolated storm activity over the northwest, nothing changes there. A little bit over the western cape as well. Um, uh, this is more rainfall modelling so it doesn't tend to show up storms very well. So, uh, But you can use your imagination and see that overall it's pretty benign conditions for the next, uh, next four days and this is an overall four day outlook there. Um, and then the second four days though does get interesting. We do get that trial system that's been pushing across the country is going to create a lot of shower and storm activity um, over the southern parts of Queensland, uh, northern or pretty well all of New South Wales, e all of the eastern half of New South Wales and we're going to see an increase in thunderstorm activity again over the northwest um, in, in the four to eight day period as well uh, after
whether this trough system pushes through. Uh, we'll also see a little bit more activity over the Gulf Country early next week. Basically next week is looking very stormy for the eastern half of the country and also for the northwest parts of uh, the Territory as well. Um, so over the course of the eight day period uh, we're seeing some fairly decent falls there getting up to 100 millimetres over parts of New South Wales and it's fairly widespread storm activity there 25 to 50 mils over the northwestern half of uh, the Northern Territory and the northern parts of the Kimberley. So definitely some rain on the way for a lot of the country but not quite over the next four days more so in the period early to mid to late next week uh, starting on the weekend for the southeastern half of the continent. Uh, there's nothing interesting in the cyclone outlooks. They're all saying very low potential, and that's uh, that's fair enough too. Nothing in the modelling is showing anything other than low potential uh, at this stage, uh, and and is, isn't showing anything for at least the next couple of weeks. So if we start to look at the uh, the MJO, the MJO signals over the Western Hemisphere. I'll show you a diagram of where that is uh, at the moment. Um, the El Nino is fairly neutral. Not much happening. It's a fairly stagnant pattern, other than the fact that the north West did cop a fair bit of rain um, last night and over the past couple of days and will cop a fair bit more uh, in the four to eight day period or four to ten day period. Um, the tropical cyclone season outlook's been summarised too by the bureau. Uh, they're saying pretty well what they said at, at the start of the at, at the start of the period in, in October. Um, they said about 11 tropical cyclones, uh, give or take a couple. Uh, probably out of those, we're probably going to see three or four across the coast, and that's that's a pretty standard season for us here in Australia. Um, November's looking very quiet cyclone-wise, but that's what we told you on the uh, on the outlook last last week when we issued that. Anyway, November has only actually had two cyclones, and this is what this is saying in here. Uh, they've only had a couple of cyclones in the history of November to actually affect the coast, and we will start to see, or we should hopefully start to see, early December if that MJO starts to push across, we'll start to see that uh, cyclone uh, threat increase. Uh, but also, more importantly for every Everyone, that potential for rain to increase and widespread rainfall over the northern half of the continent. Uh, speaking of the MJO, let's have a look where it is right now. So just a reminder, we really want the squiggly line here, the green squiggly line that you can see there on your screens. We really want that in phase four, phase five, early phase six, if we want to see some rainfall over northern Australia. Uh, we start to see the cyclone threat increase when it's in this part here for st late stage three. We start to see the cyclone threat over WA increase. Now this is the Bureau of Meteorology's MJO forecast model through to the 12th of December. So it's going a fair way into the future. You can see here the, the lines, these yellow lines vary so dramatically and so there's very little guidance as to what's going to happen with this MJO signal after the next couple of days because uh, it could completely die and, and, and rejuvenate itself in phase 3 and 4. If the Bureau of Meteorology scenario was to happen, we would definitely see an increased potential of tropical cyclone activity early in December, based on the broad scale pattern. Of course, other things can happen to influence that, to either to either influence that positively or negatively. Um, but based on the Bureau's model, if we were to follow the ensemble mean, um, you would start to see an increase in cyclone potential early to mid December, um, but also. Bear in mind that it's so far, the, the outliers here are so far out and so far in that there's very little um, there's very little reliability in this sort of guidance from the bureau. Uh, I'll give you an, an example and compare that to the European model, which does tend to do reasonably well um, over over the longer period. So this is the European model. You can see that the that the outliers are nowhere near as dramatic as the Bureau of Meteorology's model. Um, but we also see this green squiggly line still by the 2nd of December. This model only goes out to the 2nd of December, not the 12th. The Bureau's model went out to the 12th. By the 2nd of December, we still see the MJO lagging back in here in Phase 3. Overall, though, you can see the reliability guidance in this is a lot better than what we saw with the Bureau of Meteorology's model. So... Uh, over the over basically what we can say is we're looking at a fairly stagnant pattern over Australia in November and then we should start to see things ramping up in December if the MJO can actually hold itself off until say mid 
the mid part of December before it gets into phase four, we could actually see the onset of the monsoon along with the MJO. Well, that is, uh, although that is such a long way away to be talking about at the moment. L suffice to say that November's looking like a benign pattern of weather over northern Australia, uh, based on the broad scale patterns at least anyway. There is modelling that is suggesting that we will see a tropical cyclone form sometime late in November in very early December in the middle of the Indian Ocean. There is some guidance for that, uh, but once again, fairly low reliability in that because we can't uh, we can't definitively say uh, or we can't say with a high degree of confidence how this green squiggly line, the MJO Ensemble Mean, is going to progress through uh, phases three here and phases four here over the next month. So just to give you an example why it's important that the MJO holds itself back now until early to mid-December, we start to see as the MJO hits that fourth phase, we do start to see more rainy conditions, more, more conditions that are rainier than average, I guess you could say, uh, starting to hit Western Australia, the central, uh, the interior of Australia as well. And we do start to get these things here, these westerly wind anomalies that start to push through. Now, if they can coincide with a fairly strong high in the Northern Hemisphere, they could be what actually be what actually kicks off our monsoon. So um, as we get into phase five, we still get these westerly wind anomalies um, through to uh, through to December, and they actually increase in phase six. So we really, if I guess what we want to see is we want to see, since that MJO is not going to get a move on across at the moment, we'd love to see it stall, stall, stall for another month or so, and then get in here around about mid-December. If it gets in too quickly, it won't bring the monsoon trough down and then we won't get another visit from the MJO until January, which could mean a late onset monsoon again. And we don't want that again. We had that last year uh, and we saw what happened with our season last season. Elsewhere in the world, we're not even going to talk about the dreadful hurricane season in the US. Uh, it was one of the quietest seasons ever. In fact, it could possibly have been the quietest season ever, ever, ever recorded. So uh, we thought we had it bad. They've got it much worse there. Uh, all right, but the Northwest Pacific has just recorded its most active October on record. Since records began, they haven't had as many typhoons as they had in the October period, uh, in, the, in the month of October just gone. Look, that activity is continuing. Yet again, it's relentless. In November, we're seeing Typhoon Haiyan um, is going to eventually affect uh, the Philippines. As to which island of the Philippines it affects is, is still up in the air at the moment. Uh, it's going to affect it as a Category 4, so a very severe tropical cyclone, um, and it's going to do so in about three or four days' time. Our good friend Josh Morgerman from iCyclone and James Reynolds, who is a renowned typhoon chaser, uh, are both going to be there to, to witness it and get as close as they can to it. It might be a little tricky to actually get into the core of this one just because it is quite tricky travelling in parts of the Philippines. It's not like going down the road here in Queensland or, or, or Western Australia. It is a lot trickier over there than it is here. But it is going to be a Category 4 system, and the data that they get out of that will be very interesting, as will the footage. So we wish them luck, and we wish them. Uh, we hope that they stay safe, and I'm sure they will, being very experienced cyclone chasers. But it's just relentless, folks, what's happening here in the Northwest Pacific. And overall, it's an average season for them, but it really started as one of the slowest seasons ever, and now it's just ramping up unbelievably over the last couple of months. Uh, it's just really really crazy activity happening over there. So in wrapping all this up, folks, uh, enjoy the quiet, uh, quiet three or four days of lack of weather over the next, uh, until at least the weekend, and then I hope you enjoy some very, very stormy conditions over eastern, over the eastern half of Australia, uh, all the way up through Queensland, and also the northwestern parts of the Northern Territory, Northern Kimberley. Uh, some of that really stormy, stormy weather will start uh, around the weekend and then continue through most of next week, or at least the early half of next week. Uh, we'll have another update later on this week to see if that's going to plan as well. Thanks very much for watching tonight, um, and we'll talk to you again on the Friday night.